So I recently bought this flood damaged A35 AMG. Not only is it flood damaged, but it's also got a running issue. And I knew that when I bought it. The car came from a subscriber on my channel who was completely honest with me about the fact that it had a running issue. And me being me, I thought this would make some great content for the channel and also a potential great prize for Planet of Dreams. Since buying the car, I've actually spoken to the previous owner who owned the car at the point it was flooded. He's provided me some footage from the day that it was flooded and some more information, not only about the potential issue with the engine, but also some details on when it was flooded. But more on that later. And now we're at VRS, and in today's video, we're going to hopefully find out what's wrong with the A35. Okay, Will, welcome to my um, my motor. flood damaged A35 AMG. It's yellow, mate. It's got a lot going for it's it. It's really clean. Has it been in a flood or something? <laughs> Um, it actually has been in a flood, yeah? But when you close the bonnet, you don't see all that water residue under the bonnet. That's because it's leaking antifreeze. And that would explain why in the boot... It's got antifreeze. It's got an antifreeze bottle, yeah. It's probably leaking antifreeze because I'm guessing the head's cracked because that's really common on this and it's pressurising the water system. Oh my God. <sighs> Lol. Unless it's had the, had the new head on it at Mercedes already. I've got a pal there, I'll ring him and ask him if it's had any history of that. I'm guessing what really happened, they found out the head was cracked and then drove it into the flood and then claimed off through insurance. <laughs> okay. Nice car though, isn't it? <laughs> well, it is when the bonnet's closed. Well, when it, it, it drives, it drives really well. It's just on um, tick over it, misfires a little bit. Well, we could pull the plugs out and I might be, I've got a camera that does that, and looks back on itself. I okay. might be able to see if it's, because you, sometimes you can see if it's cracked, but you'd be able to see if it's, Maybe if it's pressure, oh, I can do a block test on it and see if it's got emissions in the coolant system. Because that clip there looks bent anyway. It looks like it's probably leaking out of there. So it may be that it's not that, and it's just got a bent clip. It's a common issue with these cars, yeah? Yeah, head's cracking out, yeah. There's pages of it on Google if people want to look it up. So What is it, a manufacturer design fault then? Why do they crack, you know? I think, potentially, yeah. So this, with the way the, the spark plug, so the, on this one, the injector sits where the spark plug would go in between the valves in the middle, mm -hmm. and the plug comes in from the side where an injector would come in on a DI, so Mercedes did it the other way around. Okay. And it's got a lump in the head yep. where the plug sits in and the plug protrudes through that hole. Well, I presume when, when the combustion happens, the flame front and everything else, it probably gets that lump really hot and it, they crack from uh -huh. there. And then obviously there's potentially a water jacket right near there yeah that then it might then it leaks water it, it, it might not pressure i think that's either. a very logical guess because this car went from the owner that had it when it was you know flooded it then went to the guys that we bought it off and it's been looked at by a couple of people it i'm guessing that every time someone's looked at it they've said dead's cracked and then they've just sold it on and then someone else has bought it yeah not knowing yeah i mean it's not like you buy tons of these and sell them is it otherwise you'd know about i've it. never had one and no. when I got offered it, I thought, this is exciting. This is a headache for YouTube, and we like headaches for YouTube. Well, I do, you don't. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just an engine. And if it's got a cracked head, it needs a cylinder head on it. And, it, and Is it, that it, really? It, yeah, ultimately. Which is it is. <laughs> I mean, to fix it would be cost engineering-wise way more than just getting another cylinder head. I so suspect. you'd have to put a new cylinder head on it, which obviously, I say put it on, the engine then needs to be stripped. Yep. And rebuilt with the new cylinder head. There's a lot of bits on these. Um, I think what we would do first, though, is ascertain whether it has really got a crack in there or it's just a, a daft clip or something like that. I can't believe anyone would have missed that anyway. That mm -hmm. clip shouldn't be that shape. It should be obviously bent further around. And it does look like it's spraying out of there somewhere. I mean, we could put a pressure test kit on it and pump it up and see where it's... Ah, there you go. It's not even got a clip on there, look. So you've, we've talked a lot about worst case scenario and I, I had this chat with the guys <laughs> what? I laugh if it was that it won't be it won't be that no. it will not be that and I haven't I have not just moved that for the video either no this is, this is like I swear on my children's life no, I know I know <laughs> there you go that's that's your so water leak that's the water leak fixed yeah job done we still got a crack turn hopefully not will yeah well it it'd might... be a right result if I managed to buy a, no. a lemon <laughs> That's what it needs to be called, doesn't it? This needs to be called the lemon. You sort of mentioned there is a best case scenario, which it might just be something silly, yeah? It could be something silly, yeah. So hopefully it is. This has obviously been a part, I would have thought. Mm -hmm. And that bolt there looks like it's probably come out of another bracket somewhere and they've just put it back in the wrong place. It's a nice car, a nice looking car. It's a lovely What's it got, the aero kit, you say? The aero kit, yeah. yeah. It's got the right wheels on it. Ain't done too many miles either. What is the mileage on it? Just sort of 66,000 miles. How come you never had one of these then? Just, I just, I suppose we film a lot of BMWs. We attract a lot of BMWs. I love BMWs, so we buy a lot of BMWs. Yeah. Fixed it. 
I always look at value for money and I, I love saving cars. And I look at this car. How much was it? I paid, I can't remember, I think it was 12 and a half grand. So I looked at it and I thought, are we going to get another opportunity to buy something like this? What's a retail? What's one retail then? Do you know what? I can't remember the retail price. I think the retail price of this car being non categorized was in the region of 20 grand. I'll put it on the screen now for everyone to see. Cheap car, isn't it? Um, so I look at it and think it looks good value. We're planning to give it away on Planet Dreams, providing it's oh, not, yeah. yeah, providing it's not too much to get yeah, this done. Yeah, no, so that, that yeah. it's going to be dependent well, on that. We might have a crack, Teddy. It might just be, you know, it just literally could all be a coincidence. Yeah. And that, that's just been overlooked. I've seen things like this before where someone's thought it's something really bad and they've just looked at it like I did. I came straight in with a Oh, the head will be cracked and that, and then uh, probably, yeah. I'll be honest, I'm usually quite optimistic, as you know, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I think it's going to be bad. <laughs> I think... <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I, I, if I felt confident if, <laughs> that this is going to be fine, I'd be saying, no, I'd be fine. I'd, I'd be brushing it off like it's nothing. I'm pretty sure that you're going to be ringing me in the next few days to say, Calvin needs a cylinder. If it's misfiring, it'll have a crack to it, so... Yeah. And that water thing, that's doing nothing to do with it. That's where somebody's had all that off to take the plugs out and then not put it back on properly, probably. So, well, we'll see. Hope is a wonderful thing and we can hope. Before Will started stripping the engine, he wanted to delve deeper to get more knowledge on the problem. And the choice of device to do this with is a Carly OBD scanner. Right, so Carly, yeah? What we want to do is diagnostic. Big thanks to Carly for sponsoring this video, by the way. I will link them in the description below. Use my code, I think it's CCD10. Might be that, if it's not that, I'll put that in the description below as well. They're brilliant, so you can do diagnostics on this. So we click diagnostics. Okay, so go in there. It looks like everything's ticked, so. It check for issues in, in that case, if that's what it. And this should give us a bit of an insight on. Well, it'd be nicer, because the aircon, obviously, if, you, if you've if you got an aircon issue, you could use Carly for that, because it, it will tell you how much pressure is in the aircon system. When there's so many ECUs on the car, mm -hmm. it has to check through lots and lots and lots oh, of things really? in the can system. So the, the more complicated the car, the, the longer it takes for this to, to oh, check through a thing, because right. it'll go, it'll check through every single ECU in the car for a fault. I've got a feeling when the main video goes live on this, one of the previous owners is going to message and say, that was my car. And yeah, this is the story. Yeah, show results. So should I pass it to you? No, you can hold yeah. it, you know, yeah, so. So it says very bad at the top. That's like, <laughs> that's alarming, it's a lot it? of issues. So your motor electronics, which is obviously your ME engine. So <laughs> press the four issues for that, let's have a look at that. Issue so, number one there is PO, it's got the, the diagnostic code there as well, isn't it? Yep, so combustion misfiring on cylinder one has been detected. So that's that PO30185 fault code. You've also got PO30, 385, which is cylinder three, should we? Yeah, cylinder three. Yeah. And you've got um, combustion misfire. Well, that's fine. We, we, you've got all these fault codes. So that's right? a minor issue at the bottom. The major ones are mis cylinder misfires, yeah? Yeah. So the coolant level is a malfunction. Well, the coolant level thing we know is potentially because um, the coolant's been dropping. That's uh, interesting, because had I seen this when I bought the car, then this would have been quite helpful. But it's interesting. All these things are interesting, aren't they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, might, that could be that that wiring's all on the same bit. So then you've got communication with the malfunction control unit description. So go back to the other, the other faults. So we've got eight in total, then go down. So you've got air conditioning, so that's got an issue. Oh, right. But I'm, so so the, hold on, let me just let everyone know. So I've told Will before we've done the video, this car, the aircon doesn't work. And then we've got that on here. And it's straight on there. So you've got that B112749 fault code, which on here it says the air quality sensor has a malfunction. Mm -hmm. um, I doubt that is causing this. So um, systems with issues, instrument cluster, says so it's got an issue in electronic ignition lock. So we'll look. Uh, keyless go sensor in the left rear door handle is a malfunction. Keyless sensor in the right rear door handle is a malfunction. These are all these are all moderate, so I'm guessing these are intermittent faults. Yeah. Uh, generic communication faults. So clear this system. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we'll clear that one. Yeah. If those faults, so repeat check now. But the, everything else is good. Yeah. So go back down again and go to the instrument cluster. Let's see what that says. Battery discharge protection is activated, so that's okay. So basically, um, according to this, we've got a cylinder one and three misfire, and then that's a separate one, and that's 
there's a signal. Okay. So cylinder one and three misfire. Yep. An issue with the aircon. I'm and guessing the aircon's a gas thing. I can put the aircon machine on it and I can work that out from there. Yeah, see okay. It. From that information that Carly's given us, pull the plugs out, have yep. a look at the plugs, see what the colour's like of the plugs, and then put my camera down the bore, have a look what the piston's like, things like that, mm. see if I can see anything, you know, in, in, in the cylinder Let's that's see wrong. See if anything's obvious there, yeah. Okay, cool. What you can also do with Carly is a used car check, and this will obviously check all of like the, the actual hardware of the car. Oh, and, it, and it's got, it reads the ECU, because we've done this with the M4, didn't we, to check the mileage on the M4. Yeah. So you, with Carly, you can plug in, and it will tell you the registered mileage on the ECU, or the ECU of the car. It's got three logs there, and it just shows us the mileage is all good. Um, it's even got like basic stuff like finance history and stuff like that, so that's all handy. Handy information when you're buying a used car. So that's everything from Carly. I will link them in the description below, and um, we'll see what else we can conclude, will yeah? Yep. Will, <laughs> so we're back a few days later now. The yellow submarine. The famous yellow submarine. We've got a bit more knowledge about the car now though, haven't we? You found a news report. But the puddle weren't too, it weren't like really too no, submerged in water. No, the guy water. said that he'd drive into it, but then stopped and then didn't, he didn't like try and start didn't it Didn't try again and start and stuff, it. So. And it turned out that the guy that owned it at that point in time, he reached out, I spoke That's to him. That's right, yeah. And um, he bought it back off the insurance company. He's been driving it. He'd been driving it after it's, he said it had its service and it was fine. So the issue with the engine is potentially or potentially not related to the, to the we flood. Now we just don't know. We'll know in a minute, hopefully. So now we're looking like an absolute horror story because- So the reason we're at this point yeah. is because I did a compression test. Yeah. And this should have about 200 PSI. So 150 on cylinder one, which is the misfire and 200 across 234. Mm -hmm. um, and we were sitting in the car with Carly, remember? Yeah. And it was really hot, wasn't it? Yeah. So when we were stripping it down earlier, Matt found some stuff on the, on the under tray, which is basically that, which is the clutch off the aircon. Um, so that's why the aircon doesn't work. <laughs> so I don't know how long it was sitting in the, in the water, in the water but, but you can see there that- Yeah, that's... because it wasn't started. I don't know, look, it, it's, it's broken, it's fell off. So it needs an aircon pump. Uh, Clutch. The other thing I noticed driving it in, in and out of the shop is when you turn it on lock, the car groans and locks up. So okay. the diff's out and we'll oh take it apart in a minute because we drop the oil out. So this is the oil out of the diff, yeah? Yeah, but it, I mean, it, there's loads of shrapnel in there. Really? Yeah, lots of debris and bits, but if you smell it, it smells burnt. It smells very burnt. What happens on these is there's like a Haldex part and a pump. Basically, it's a centre diff because mm -hmm. it's a bevel box to the back and the centre diff is basically that Haldex part that comes on and off. Yeah. Because the, the A35, the diff's so delicate compared to the A45S, mm -hmm. they just they just break. So we'll take, we're gonna take the clutch unit out, yeah. have a look at it and see if it's felt a bit, or if that part's replaceable rather than buying a diff. So the, so sorry, the diff issue is not, again, not necessarily related to the floods. It doesn't it look could... like it's flood related Oh to me. really, doesn't okay. Because you'd notice if it was water damage. Correct. Okay, so for anyone owning an A35 or considering buying one, these are, these are things that, you know, that Cracked actually to look, look, look out for. Rear diffs. Okay. Yeah, I think turbo, the turbo doesn't feel great if I'm honest. So it's got some end float in it, but unless it's had an ingress, a huge ingress of water, which has basically damaged it, I, the turbo will probably be okay. But we'll check that with turbo. Do you know what, this is what this car needs. Even you pointing out the, the aircon pump and you know, the diff, all, it needs a thorough going through, doesn't it? It's the car, to be fair. You know, if you were going to buy this car, you'd get in it and go, yeah, it runs a bit rough. Maybe it wants a set of plugs, which, it doesn't, and the aircon doesn't work once a regas, and the rear diff thing, they're all, um, the aircon pump, little. I don't know if that's common on these, I yeah. don't know that, No, uh, but I know the other issues are. So really, I mean, the car's a tidy car, so fix the diff, whatever we're gonna do with the engine. So I think the engine's either gonna be a bent rod, So the weird, which yeah, yeah, let's talk about the engine. flood related. Yeah, okay. So it's either gonna be, so what we're gonna do is set the head off. Which is where we're almost we're at now. We're literally about to lift it off. Okay. Genuinely, you've just turned up, we're about to lift it off. So Wicked. so what's, what's best case scenario, what's, what's worst case scenario now? I know it's gonna sound stupid, but a best case scenario is probably a bent rod. Really? So you as long as it's not cockled the piston over mm -hmm. and scuffed the bore. Yeah. Um, it didn't appear to be smoking, but that's not always, but, but there's a general rule, if it's not smoking, then, then we've got it, a hopefully, tight cylinder. Hopefully it's not um, cylinder. Put a big score in the bore. Yeah. So if it's got a bent rod, yeah. uh, you can buy a rod. I'd, I had a quick look, I think it was less than 200 quid for a rod. Wow. So we can swap that over, even if it's a press fit pin, as long as the piston's not damaged, we can put a rod in it. Obviously we'll check the rings that haven't, aren't trapped or anything. And then 
put it back and if the head's not cracked we can put it all back together with a you know some gaskets and a few bits worst case is if it's not got a bent rod and the head's got a huge crack in it and it needs a brand new head and the head's a fortune if it is this is so interesting will by the way <laughs> this is actually so interesting i know it's a headache no it's not, it's not actually it wasn't that bad was it I, I haven't done it matt's done it on it so um but to be fair it was what half eight this morning it's now two o'clock the diff's off and the head's about to lift Wicked. off so i mean and that's go that's going at a normal pace not rushing it making sure we you know everything's we, we understand what we're doing and why we're taking it apart and and you know we're not going to damage anything you have to pull to get the head off they have these the guides have these little pegs in so we made a little tool to pull the pegs out okay Otherwise, you can't lift the head off. Oh, uh, right. So okay. I just had a quick look to see if there was like some special tool, but I just used a socket and a bolt, and then they just they'd slid down. Wicked. So yeah, let's let's pull this head off and hope that we've only got a bent rod. And after pulling the head off, we revealed some potentially positive news about the engine. I can see through my own eyes that that looks a bit That's more That's the over-fueling cylinder. Oh, okay. You can clearly see that there's a crack in that valve there. Uh, oh, yeah. So it's got a, what you would call a burnt valve. But hold on, so Will, we could potentially only need to do a valve. I know it's still not a... I mean, It's not a nothing the, job, but... So, all, so what we could do... So in this instance, what you do now, you can do various different things. If you were to lift the head on its end lock, well, take the, take the turbo off because it's in the way, and um, fill that port there, which is your inlet port, with brake cleaner, because yep. brake cleaner seeps through everything. If those valve seats were uh, sealed, sealed yep. they wouldn't leak through. If you then filled up the exhaust side, yep. then you would see clearly that it's going to leak through there. So if it didn't leak through that side, then we could take that valve out. If that valve seat is okay, and it's just lifted that burnt valve, then that would probably be okay. That may indicate though it's burnt for a reason, which could be an injector issue. Could it have been because of the flood? Because water got in there? <sighs> Not a burnt valve normally, no. Unless no? I'm no, I don't think so. Okay. But I mean that's that could be why we've got a misfire. Well that, that is why that's a that's definitely that's a why we've got a misfire, misfire yeah? yeah. So you've got cylinder one and four at yeah, the top. Have you there. got that spanner mat for the bottom pulley you had earlier? Do you want to turn it, if I hold the chain? So you're trying to get them right up at, at the top there, are you? Yeah, I'm going to put a DTI on it to make sure, but I'm just having a quick just turn visual. it over so we can have the other pistons at the top, Matt. Just looking at that, you can see that's about a mil and a half from the top. Which... So if we then see if we can get the others up. This is fascinating. This is actually amazing. could not have turned up at a better time. <laughs> so that's going to be our biggest concern, if there's damage to that bore there, isn't it? Which is what you're feeling for now. Yeah, you can normally feel a scratch or a ridge quite prominent, but that, it doesn't feel like it is. I mean, they're not going to look brand new because it's not brand new. Of course. They don't look rusty or rotten or anything. There's a few marks in them, but nothing more than you'd expect from a car being ran and turned off and yeah. not normal. So yeah. far, Will, it's seeming like... Just a burnt valve. Just, just about, it's all good, pretty good news, isn't it? Yeah, well, we're all, yeah, I mean, so far, but we need to know why it's burnt the valve, that's the thing. Yeah. There's a reason for that, they don't just burn valves. Okay. So it's got a hot on a valve seat. Yep. Now, if the valve doesn't seat properly, then it will get hot. All right. So if the, or if the valve seat is cracked. Yep. And then it's burnt the valve from there, I need to obviously look into that. So what we'll do is we'll get the turbo off Yep. And um, do some more. Do some more investigation. Yeah, so you might just get away with a valve valve seat and a valve. I'll have to see if it's cracked. It doesn't appear that, because they cracked through the plugs and all sorts. But. It's very yeah. rare to burn a valve on an engine like this. For not, not, not this particular car, but, but on newer engines. Really? I can't remember the last time we did a, a burnt valve, you know, a, a burnt valve on a on modern a, engine. On a modern engine. Ah. Probably talking like a Mark V Golf 1.4, 1.6, 2006, 2005 style engines, mm -hmm. Polos and things like that. They were really common. Yeah. That was normally injectors. 
running lean and things like that. So maybe it has ran lean and it's just got that valve seat hot. So you're going to do some more investigating now. Yeah, well, we'll get the, we'll get the turbo off next. Yeah. Uh, and then once the turbo's off, we'll take that valve out. Yeah. Have a look at the seat. Mm -hmm. It's actually a Haldex. So yeah, yeah, you can see basically the prop shaft comes down here yep. and it will turn that. Then that turns your back wheels. Well, the inside there is a clutch pack. Yep, quite There's yeah. There's a pump here, which is broken. So it goes in there. That spins basically a cog there yep. off that cog, which then turns a pump, fills that full of fluid. So like a viscous coupling. Yep. And then that makes that go solid then with friction from the fluid in the clutch plates. So when you go around a corner, that turns it off and it allows the wheels all turning at different speeds, not to skip. Okay. So and, that, and that's how it works. Oh, so it frees it up a little bit. Correct. Wicked. Well, it just turns it off completely. Most of the time, it'll right. When it'll you just... brake, when you brake, it'll turn it off at low speed. Or, or when you get into fourth gear and above, it'll turn it off. Okay. So that will that will that will switch off because there's no Stops point that in doing binding, it. Yeah. Well, it doesn't need it. So yeah. it just needs front wheel drive. So most viscous coupling cars or Haldex cars will fourth gear upwards won't even work. Uh... In fact, most diesel ones, Tiguans and Q3s and stuff, hardly even work. So will the engines? gone off the um, Yeah, it's gonna pull bench. the spin in the hot wash. Obviously, it cleans a lot of the rubbish off. We're gonna pull the valve out. Matt's gonna do that in a second while we have a look at this. If I was wrong, it's not a Haldex as such. It kind of is and it isn't. So basically what happens is this motor that was all seized and knackered, that turns. Yep. What that does is that turns that. So that goes in here, like so. Yep. And that. Bear in there, runs off the back of that racer. Yep. And that goes over the end, like so. In there, that is basically a slope. Yep. What that does is when that's in there, that slope sits on there like that. Yep. And then you have this, which is another bearing. <laughs> goes wow. Out there. And then these are your clutch plates. So they've got little spring washers in between. So these little washers here, what these do, yeah. is they push the plates apart so that they can spin freely. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So they sit on the outside and you've got your metal intermediate plates in between. Okay. Yeah. So they're like a spacer or such. Correct. And that, those, as you can see, yeah? Yeah. See I can spin yeah, it's that. like a spring. Yeah, I can see that. So in between each plate, you get a spring washer. Hopefully this won't take me too long to put it back Yeah, we can fast forward. You can see this is the... Yeah. Material, see how it's all dark. This is all the material that's come off, basically. So same as the conversation we had the other day about the clutch in the S3. It's similar. It's very similar. So the idea is that's meant to bind and then that causes Correct. friction. And then the, the oil spins, so it's a wet it's a wet clutch, not a dry clutch. Okay. okay. So yeah. as we go back to So sorry, I'm just to state the obvious, a wet clutch is when it's permanently soaked in oil. In oil, yeah? yes. That's Whereas correct. the clutch in the S3 isn't then, no? It is, a manual isn't, but the uh, the DSG is. It's okay. always soaked in oil, wet clutch, yeah. Wicked. So when I turn this gear, it turns that cog. That cog turns on those four balls, on the, on the little slopes. So they yep. say, and you watch those now. See how they squash together? Yeah, yeah, I can see that. So that basically turns. Oh, wow. Obviously they are a lot further together. So what that does is that makes them connect, not connect. But they so all... then it goes from two wheel drive to four wheel drive. Correct. So that's how that, that's how that works. That's a viscous cup than how that. That is that unbelievable. I'm, works, yeah. I'm actually fascinated. So all we need now really to fix that yeah. is a set of new plates. Uh, it doesn't look like the bearings cavitated anywhere. So it's, it looks like it's- Even you know, that, that is a work of art, that thing. So we can wash it all and then maybe put that back together if I can buy those plates. If I can't, then we got to try and find a diff. Okay. So um, hopefully somebody does something for it. It'd be good if you could find. So you could buy the motor, I think. So it'd be nice to rebuild the current diff, though, wouldn't it? It'd be, you know, it'd be good yeah. for the car, good for. Well, the... Yeah, I mean, it'd just be so, rather than you buying a diff that's probably already like that again. Yeah. And yeah. Car, exactly. And yeah. Have an argument with the salvage yard and. Yeah. Because they're pretty much all like that. So, so that's the that's the diff situation concluded. Well, not concluded because we've yet to. It's a mess. We'll mm. clean it. Try and make it right. Try and source Stop these done. plates. We're gonna and try now and we're going to go back to the back engine. Back to the cylinder head. We're going to pull the valve out. Um, unfortunately, we're using that for the diff. So what we're going to probably do is put the diff in a box. This is an on-car spring mm -hmm. um, valve spring fitting tool. It's like a universal one. Okay. So I've put some rag in the chamber now. Yep. Normally, you'd have a piece of wood or something that would be the same to push it down. Or you could... Uh, you can have stuff machined or use body filler 
and you put like grease in there, put body filler and it goes to the shape and dries. Okay. And you use that, it's a very quick way of making a chamber tool. If you just try and keep that. Oh. There you go. You got them? Yep. Both, yep. So that's the valve spring off. It's a beehive spring, look. Yeah. See how it gets small at the top? Yeah. It's not cracked or fractured, which is a good start. All good. So you've literally just pushed it down then and popped that. Yeah, so it's a really good tool. So you just basically pop it down. These are collets. Yeah. So this is a, a triple groove valve spring. Yeah. So again, that, that one's like, so not valve spring, sorry. Triple groove valve stem. Yeah. Um, so this is the valve stem, yeah? This is the stem. Sorry, whilst we're on this subject, what, what is a, yeah, what's a valve stem seal? Ah, that sits, that sits around there. Yeah. So that obviously goes into where the oil is. Yeah. So to stop the oil coming down the shaft of the valve into the engine. Yeah. Because when, when it draws air into the engine, sucks it into the engine as the piston goes down, it will try and draw oil from down the valve stem. Of course, yeah. So you have a guide that that, that goes in and out of. Yep. So that's your guide, your bronze guide or your metal guide, or whatever. And then the stem seal sits over the top of the guide and then that seals the oil from coming down the side of it. So when your guide wears, the valve does this, yep. it moves around. That then stretches the seal, like a welly top or a wizard sleeve, as you'll probably know it. Yep. And then um, that stretches it and then obviously it then goes hard. So like the M5 would have had something like that potentially. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, so that's, that's a common issue with a lot of engines, isn't it? Oil correct. stem seals. Yes. So then you've got, this is the offending article here. This is the damaged valve, yeah? Yeah. So you can see there, the valve seat is burnt. It's been very hot. Hold on, let's get, yeah, we'll focus. Can now. you see it? Yeah, I can see so it. So you now. can see where the seat's burnt and it's cracked. Yeah. So it's not making, so if we were to put something in there now, it would just leak fluid out. So that's, that's the. That's the damaged one. That's the damaged one. So that's what's losing the compression. Not all of it, just some of it. 80% of that valve seat that would, no, it's actually burnt the other side as well, I lied. So, so it's actually, completely had it, that? Yeah, with the valve's knacked, yeah. So yeah. now we just need to try and have a look. I mean, the valve seat's knackered. I could always just put a wire wheel on the head, but I don't want to do that in case we do damage it. So what are you looking for now? Damage to the seat. Yeah. Or a crack. You see where that restriction is there? Yeah. That was right where the crack was. Oh, right. So I'm guessing that that restriction is causing a hot spot on the valve. Okay. So maybe the thing to do with these engines is to uh, machine a bit of that off. Yeah. To make that flow out a bit better. So it doesn't get too hot in there? Yeah, yeah, because if that's, if that's building up back pressure there and then causing it to because it's right where that's literally right where the seat's gone yeah i mean this might be like a mercedes guy might be looking at this going oh yeah we all know that uh, you know i don't this is new to you yeah, yeah because so, you can, yeah you're, because you're an audi VW these bike. have only just come off a warranty yeah really yeah, yeah and yeah, people course. people are not repairing them the no. ones where we've had them in before it's going to be like 10 12 grand to put an engine in one yeah it's laugh i'll yeah, just go and sell it down at weber on a car all that sell it to idiot calvin he'll buy it <laughs> Sorry, mate. <laughs> Big cruel. Yeah, you had to throw that in there, didn't you? No, no, no. <laughs> so you think that that restriction has caused, because this was our concern. So we know that that's cracked, yeah, that's damaged even. I don't know that, but I'm but looking your at it. assumption Normally, is... Normally, in the valve throat, yeah. and your, this is your short side radius here, yeah. that's the shortest side. Normally in there, yeah. you wouldn't have a restriction. Normally, you'd have a 32, on a two litre 16 valve, you'd have a 32 or 34 mil intake valve and a 28 mil exhaust. Yeah. That's kind of the go, like this is a 300 horsepower engine. So a Golf R has a 34 mil in, intake valve and a 28 mil exhaust. Yeah. That's 300 or well, 280 to 310. Yeah. That's what they were from 2014 up to now, as yep. they still are. And that's out of the box. This is 300, supposedly. That's like a 24 and a half mil valve, exhaust valve, so that's tiny. And there's a restriction, and it's trying to do 300 horsepower. So probably, that's probably why when you tune them, they don't make big power because the exhaust valves are so small. Because it's limited by that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you are limited. All to that is your limiting factor. Of course. Where the bottleneck comes is back pressure. So that, obviously, it's, it, the, the engine's a pump at the end of the day, and it has to pump the air it combusts. Air and fuel that combusts has to be pumped out the engine. Outwards, yeah. So no matter how big a turbo is, it's still going to go past those valves. Yeah. And as, as well as that, if you look so at the valves, interesting. the valves are really tight as well. Because you basically, so Mercedes, instead of having to plug in the middle, yeah. like everyone else, 
and then the injector up here. Mm -hmm. Mercedes put the injector in the middle and the plug at that angle. What that does is that makes the valves very wide apart. If you look at the exhaust valve, it's very close up to the edge of the cylinder. Yeah, it's very, very close. So normally your exhaust valves would be a lot closer together. So there's a lot of room around it. Which is strength, isn't it? Yeah, but it's also room for flow. So when that exhaust valve's open, if you imagine your cylinder's there, that's only really 70% of that is flow out of the exhaust valve. Oh, sorry, I see what you're saying. So okay. that, but then that does deflect that little bit. The exhaust gases will go that way and then back out. Yeah. But you would think that the reason it's small is because they can't get it in for the edge, you see? Yeah, my yeah. My finger. So, mm. and then, so I'm guessing that it's just a poor design. It you is can't a make them any big. You could probably get that another mil, but it's diminishing gains because the, the bigger you make it, the closer it is to the edge. So you're not going to get any airflow around it. Yeah. So if you made that bigger, as big as you could inside there, yeah. and keep the same size valve. So if you can make the throat behind it much bigger and then cut the valve seat right to the very edge. Yeah. And then you can just put another angle on the valve there. It would allow the gases to yeah, the gases will escape get quicker. quicker. Just doing that can make a big difference, to be fair. That is uh, so interesting. But I mean, I, I, if it was me, you know, I, I would. I wonder if we could maybe. I mean, we could probably just. I have a, I have a word of my cylinder red man. See what he thinks. What, as, what, for a second opinion, you mean? Yeah. So your conclusion at the minute is because we're at the minute we're well, trying we're to work out. Put it back together. If he's going to do that again, is it? So yeah, you want to know why it's done it. You yeah. feel pretty confident. Well, why I'm it's just done wondering it. why that's there and, and what it's for. Yeah. Yeah. I've got to go and drop some Schwick stuff off at my cylinder head guy who you, does our porting for us. Yeah. Uh, the man in the shed, Dave. So I will take that head with me actually, and I'll talk to him about that. And while I'm there, we might pull the valves out and just, if we think it's going to be a benefit from it, mm -hmm. we might just, not, we won't take it out completely because obviously it's there probably as meat for the spark plug hole. Yeah. But we might just give it a little bit of a, you know, yeah. a smooth off to try and make it flow a bit better. Or we might just leave it alone. Yeah. Because it might be crucial that that's there. But whatever you conclude, it'll be, you know, with. It's only just because I've just seen it. Yeah. I thought, oh, I wonder if that's. So an issue. to conclude this video, we with um, diagnosed the reason problem. it's down on compression is because it's got a burnt valve seat and valve. Yeah, we don't know why, but we've come up with a couple of Poss may maybe possibilities. Yeah, um, can we fix it? Yes, it needs. Uh, it's going to have. I'm going to vac check all the valves. Yeah, and then we'll check all the seats. And if they're all going the same way, it'll have to have them all. If they're not, it'll just have the ones it needs. The rest will be recut, um, and then we'll clean the head up by a gasket set. I will DTR the pistons, they look the same. You can normally tell straight away. So, but I don't think it's obvious why it's down at compression. Yep. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. wicked. That's it. Sorted. You lucky and boy. We'll be, yeah, that's, that aren't is you? good news. It's aren't you a lucky boy? Aren't I a lucky boy? It's bad news. That makes good news. change, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Bad news is, you know, the engine had to come apart and come out, but the good news is it ain't the end of the world and yeah, well, we, we can save this engine. In less than a day, we've got the engine apart, worked out what's wrong with it, looked at the diff. Found out what's wrong with that. Perfect. And the aircon. So, so we're going to do a follow-up video with a running engine, a working diff, and working aircon, and then we can tune it. And no, we're not going to tune it, are we? Because you don't want to. Tune it. <laughs> we'll end it there, yeah. I'm not tuning it. All right, we'll All end right. it as that. All Sorted. Right,